Welcome back to The Big Idea. Okay, think back in your life on all the people who ever told you no. People saying they didn't like your ideas, you couldn't do it, they wouldn't help you. No, no, no. Well, across the board, almost everyone getting past the word no is one of the biggest obstacles to doing what you love. But tonight we're showing you how to beat the naysayers. And my next guest heard no over and over as he was bringing a revolutionary product to market. And now he's selling the billions because he didn't listen to no. Sir James Dyson, not taking no for an answer. His bagless vacuum is one of the top brands globally, with annual sales at more than a billion a year. But this unique design didn't come easy. Dyson built more than 5,000 prototypes that couldn't cut it and was told no by both manufacturers and retailers. Now, Dyson is pioneering another invention, the Dyson Air Blade Dryer, which dries hands in just six seconds. And he's been knighted by the Queen of England for his spirit of invention. Sir James Dyson, inventor of the bagless vacuum. How are you, sir? Very well, thank you. How, I always how say, you? sir, you really are a sir. No, no, James. James, <laughs> I want to be a duke. How do I become Duke Donnie Deutsch? I think, I, where is the, I love the sir stuff. I bet the duke bit is really difficult. We'll get back the, to that The sir later. bit is quite easy. But the duke you, bit is really difficult. You are here as an example. You're obviously a brilliant entrepreneur, a successful businessman, built company in the billions. You're a guy who throughout your career has never listened to no, has never listened to no get in the way, and so we want to kind of teach a little bit here tonight. What I love is the fact that, first let's start with prototypes. You had built 55,127 prototypes, 5,126 of them were failures. Each one of those is pretty much almost a no, even if nobody's telling you no, could have stopped you right there. How'd you keep going? Uh, because uh, all sorts of reasons, but I wanted to get there. Uh, get there in the end. So it was determination, and I, I actually enjoy failure because failure teaches you something. Thank you, thank you. Uh, whereas successes don't. You relax and you think, you know, I've done it. But so I, I, I enjoy failures because I want to understand why it failed, and you learn from that. Talk a little so bit more about that. Never, never worries me. I always say it, failure is your friend, but I want to hear more uh, about that because some people are so afraid of failure it cripples them. Mm -hmm. So tell me why failure is not only shouldn't cripple you is actually a good thing a lot of the times. But, but because in order to overcome failure, you've got to understand the failure and then be creative in order to overcome it and make something work. And that's A, deeply satisfying when you overcome it, but B, you're learning all the time. And, you know, you don't make that mistake again. You know, it's lodged there in the brain. How did you, when nobody would give you money, how did you come up with money? Well, um, you can actually do something on surprisingly little money if you really try. And I did manage to go and borrow some money from an ordinary clearing bank using my house as security, uh -huh. but it was, uh, I got about a million dollars, which to start a big manufacturing operation isn't very much no, money. It's not a lot. We had no money for stock. We just had enough money for the tooling, the molds to make the product. Uh, I had no money for a factory, no money for advertising, no money to employ people. But we just managed to get it going by borrowing things, begging for things. And actually, if you're very honest with people, they want to help you. Yeah. For example, when I went to the first retailer, the first one I got to take it, he said, I won't take it unless you spend whatever it was, half a million dollars on advertising. I said, but I've run out of money. I spent it all on the product. And he sort of looked at me for a long time and he said, um, look, if I give you a big order, will you spend 20% of that big order on advertising? And I said, yes, it's a deal. That's great. So people, if, you, if you're honest with people and explain exactly what your position is, most people want to help you. They do, especially mm. if they could see, I could see me your first time, you're a nice guy. People like nice people, and I, so I think that's great. You have a great thing that you call the uh, wrong decision. You celebrate the, the wrong decisions with your, oh, it's, we call what we do wrong thinking in your company. Explain that to me. Well, if you try and think of the right way of doing something, particularly using your experience, because I always think experience is a very bad thing. Sometimes. I, I like very naive people who are willing to try something new. But if you, if you go the sensible way, the, the right thinking way, that's the way everybody else has gone. If you think of something stupid, something wrong, something that's bound to fail, you go over into a different spot, and then you work out how to make that failure um, successful, and that sends you on a whole different track. And in the end, you end up with a different solution to everybody else. I call it the and zig they, theory. By nature, sometimes, when you zig, when everybody else is zigging, you almost win by default, because you're yeah. already in a different space, and you have to figure it out. So exactly. I love hearing yeah. that. Yes, and what you are actually, you, you have to be intelligent all the time. You have to think every solution to every problem if you're following a different path. 
And that's very satisfying, it's very exciting. And you feel as though you're pioneering. And I think that's very important for people when you're, when you're trying out something new, when you're trying to make, make a success of something, to feel that you're pioneering. Speaking of pioneering, and, and, and I think, James, you can talk to this almost better than anyone, what people sometimes don't understand is, by nature, if you're going down a new path, if it hasn't been done before, and you go, well, if things haven't been done before, that's something that feel is going to be successful. Yet, mm -hmm. people say no, because it hasn't been done before. And there's this weird irony there. And how did you liberate yourself from that? Yeah, you're absolutely right. You have almost the whole system against you. The, the, all the establishment are against you, because you're, you're upsetting them. You're, you're out of the norm. And you just have to get used to that. And you have to accept that almost everybody's going to say no. And in a way, that's half the fun of it. Yes. You're doing something different. You're doing something people don't believe in. You're, 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 uh, you're, you're, you're going against the norm. You're swimming against the stream. And that's exciting. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. You get worried sometimes, that, but, okay. but, but stick with it. Speaking against the dream, uh, the stream, everybody told you, okay, a clear vacuum where you could see the dirt mm. and the pet hair, all that. Nobody would want that. No, James, not going to happen. What happened there? Well, um, it was interesting because we as engineers had been feeding, I mean, I'd been doing it for sort of 10 years, I think, feeding dirt and dust into the vacuum cleaner. So if anyone should hate dust, it's me. But we enjoyed, sort of vicariously enjoyed this dirt collecting inside this see-through container because we made everything see-through on the prototype so we could understand what was happening. And so when it came to selling it and designing a machine to go into the shops, we thought it'd be nice if people could see the dirt they were collecting. Um, and the retailer said no. I mean, one retailer said, I absolutely will not take it if you can see the dirt. So we did a little bit of market research, and the retailer was right. Nobody wanted to see the dirt. But we as engineers had enjoyed seeing it. So we said, we must do it, because we enjoyed it. Surely other people would enjoy it. So we did it, and it sold. And interestingly, our competitors, when they saw it in the shop, said, ha, that'll, who wants to see the dirt? It's disgusting. But it's the first thing they've copied. Any but other lessons out there for folks who either afraid of no, or they, they're about to, they want to leave a career and somebody's saying, no, don't do it, or they want to start a business, someone's saying, not do it, or they an idea, people mm. telling them no. Sir James, what do, what do we, what do we, how do we help those people? You must get inspired by people saying no. That, that's the real thing. I mean, all, the, all my friends told me what I was doing was mad. I mean, how can you take on those big multinational companies? And the more people said that, the more people I wondered, I wondered, well, you know, perhaps everybody thinks like that, and perhaps they are vulnerable because no one ever has a go at them. No one ever tries to challenge them. Dyson Airblade dryer? Yes, we're just launching that now. Tell me about it. Well, a normal hand dryer dries by evaporation, so it takes a long time, 30 or 40 seconds. We all get fed up and we do this and walk away. Um, we do it differently. We scrape the water off your hands with an air blade, rather like a windshield wiper or a squeegee. And that, of course, requires very little energy, so it can be done very quickly. So we dry in 12 seconds instead of the 30 to 40 seconds. And most importantly, it uses less than a quarter of the energy. So environmentally, it's very good. And for people with, you know, hospitality suites and all sure. that sort of thing, very important. Well, Sir James Dyson, it's a fantastic story. Congratulations on your success. I've watched it as a marketer. I've marveled at it. And once again, a man who will not take you, no for an answer. And this is why this man is running a multi-billion dollar company. Don't let anyone know you out of your dreams. We're game planning way around huge road roadblocks tonight. You're always going to be hear hearing the word no. Don't ever listen to it. We're going to show you how to get yes over no. Don't go anywhere.